Hi guys, so the first step would be to check the velocity, the speed of your projectile. So in this case, I've already chronoed mine. Uh, this is a sub 12 foot pound um, 0.22 air rifle. So what I would do is take an average. So I'd add them three values together, divide it by three to get an average velocity to put into the scope. I'll show you how to do that after. Um, the other step that's important at this stage is to work out your scope height. So this is just a rough reading because I've already measured mine earlier. So I'm doing this one handed with the phone, but essentially it would be using something like a set of calipers. It would be um, from the middle of your barrel, which is around about there, to the middle of the uh, lens. So uh, I am doing this one handed, so it's not completely aligned, but it's around about three inches, three inches in, in this case. The uh, next step would be to get the scope zeroed. Um, I would actually write these other bits down that I've already mentioned. So the velocity and the scope height, I just write them down on a piece of paper. Get the scope zeroed first before you start messing with the ballistic settings in the app. So the next step I'll do the uh, zero in now. Just for the sake of filming, I'm just going to zero indoors today so I can only go out to seven yards maximum here. I will actually uh, change my distance later. So I fired off one shot. As you can see, it's way off at the moment. Um, I would encourage firing at least a group of three just to see where it groups. So at the moment it's slightly to the right and down quite a lot. So um, I'll talk you through now how to correct this. So the next step would be to get the gun sighted in. So we're going to go to zero reticle. Um, I, am, I am filming this through the back of the scope viewfinder with a phone. So there will be quite a lot of shakiness here. Um, as I'm just sighting in for this uh, video at seven yards, I'm going to keep my magnification quite low, but I would encourage you to probably zoom in to your maximum mag to uh, zero easier. Anyhow, so what you want to try and do here um, is doing this one handed again, sorry, is put the crosshair as close as you can to the bullseye or what you were initially aiming at. Once you've got that there, uh, press the power button once with a short press and essentially what that's just done is uh, frozen the crosshair uh, you can probably get a bit closer than I can to that because uh, I'm doing this one handed um, the next step would be so you're on the correct profile there on profile B for this one and using the right button you want to go to the X value so this is your left and right essentially uh, and the Y value is up and down. I'm going to start with up and down just so it might be easier for alignment on this case. Uh, so I'm going to press the down button and what essentially this will do is move the shot down to the point of impact, move the view down to the point of impact. I'm aiming for the middle of the three shot group here um, and I'm going to go back now to the X and I want to move the shot group to the right so I'm holding the up button until that's approximately I'd say in the middle of that group. Um, when you're happy with that roughly, you want to hold down a long press on the left button to save that. That's very close. And we'll do another three shot group here.
quite happy with that this time. Um, all I would do is just repeat that theoretical process uh, and keep adjusting as you would with a traditional day scope until you're bang on your um, where you're aiming. Uh, I would in this case move the shot slightly to the left using the X value um, just to bring that bang on. Uh, like I say, I am actually going to re-zero um, when I get out later uh, to the farm where I've got a longer distance up. The next stage, make sure you are connected to the scope directly via Wi-Fi. So to do that on the scope, you need to make sure the scope is turned on, obviously, and then long press the right button for around about 5-6 seconds until the Wi-Fi icon shows in the top right corner. And then go to the DNT app. Um, if you don't already uh, have a scope that you've previously connected to, you need to go through the add button process here. That will find the correct scope for you. Um, in this case, I've already got one connected, so it will initially say not connected. Just single press on the area where it says not connected for it to connect. You can press the back button because um, you don't need to access the live view at this stage. We're just looking at ballistics. Go to ballistics and on here. So I'll now talk you through how to um, enter the correct information to get the ballistics profile set up and um, how to then send this ballistics data to the scope. So your ballistics calculator has got the data it needs to work with. So this is just for demo purposes. Um, so the zero distance, I would encourage you to go around uh, the correct zero distance. That's good for your ranges that you shoot at. Uh, but for this purpose, I've zero today at seven yards indoors. I will be changing this later to around about 20 yards, 25 yards when I get out to the farm. The scope height, as we measured earlier, is around about three inches. Um, but what we'll be doing shortly is we'll be we might need to change this uh, to make sure the scope is impacting correctly to the point of aim with the ballistic calculator. I'll talk you through that shortly. Uh, make sure you collect, you're selecting the correct measurements here. So meters, yards, uh, centimeters, inches, so on and so forth. Twist rate isn't too important for air rifles. Um, if you do know it, feel free to enter it. Um, this is more for um, your actual guns with uh, gunpowder and everything else. Uh, I'm not very logical on that stuff. Um, caliber, obviously, select your correct caliber for your air rifle in this case. Uh, so mine's a 2.2. This is the pellet weight. So there is actually a really good built in database here. So you can press on the blue button there, search for the correct pellet uh, or bullet, depending on what your gun is. And there is a good database um, where it does pull most of this information from, which has it, it has done in this case, actually. Uh, so the calibre is correct, the weight is correct, it's 15.89. It will round it up to the nearest uh, value, I think single uh, decimal point in this case. Um, the length should be correct there. The ballistic coefficient, um, I know this to be slightly different, just in my case. Uh, than uh, what's on a database, but that's that's just more reflection of uh, how the pellet acts with uh, my particular air rifle in this case. Velocity, so um, this will be set to zero, I believe, as default, so you need to enter this. So this is the average of the three shots I took earlier with the chrono. Uh, just for this video today, I've actually turned the power down on my air rifle, so this is only around about eight foot pounds um, just as I'm shooting indoors to make it a bit safer. Once you've entered all that information you want to hit the save button and you'll know if your uh, scope isn't connected via Wi-Fi as the synced ballistic data button as you see here uh, will be greyed out. There won't be a blue icon there if you're not connected via Wi-Fi so make sure you are connected via Wi-Fi. Um, I believe there is a pending update coming out soon um not officially yet but um i believe the old ballistic table which was used more in the previous arcan firmware before the updates dnt 
ballistic tables may be um, becoming extinct essentially as the scope now has a built-in ballistic calculator so the ballistic table isn't really needed uh, so at this stage I, I won't be doing the ballistic table I'll be doing everything via sync ballistic data once you're connected via Wi-Fi so just hit that button once we are on profile B uh, in this case so uh, this is um, the one we want to sync to and then press OK in a matter of seconds, as you see there, or milliseconds, it sent the data needed to the scope itself. So I'm just back filming through the camera through the viewfinder of the scope, so again, it's going to be shaky. At this stage, I'm just going to show you how to make sure you've got the correct profile uh, in the scope selected, as well as the reticle profile. I'll explain this to you a bit more now. So firstly... Um, if you're setting up multiple profiles, either if you're using a scope on uh, separate guns, you're swapping between one or two or more, or you're using several different um, pellets or ammo, uh, you will be needing to set up separate zero profiles essentially. So in this case, if you go into here, uh, you can see I've got profile B selected. Um, so whenever you change between separate pellets or ammo or different guns, you're always going to have a different zero. So essentially, um, this is my usual profile A um, when I'm when I'm shooting uh, with this already set up. Today we're using profile B, so we're going to select profile B. Long press the left button to select that. Okay, and this is your zero reticle profile we're looking at. Um, now, you do need to make sure you go back into the menu and go into ballistic options and always have ballistic calculator set. You do this by having it selected and uh, you just press the up button on this one. Go back into that again. The reason to use ballistic calculator mode rather than ballistic table mode is with the latest updates um, you get uh, angle of inclination uh, so you're basically your elevation if you're tilted up or down it will calculate the point of impact with the scopes built in ballistic calculator go to ballistic data settings and here uh, you need to make sure you've got the right ballistic profile selected as well as changing the reticle profile because when you change reticle profile it won't automatically change the ballistic profile so on here press the up button and by pressing up and down you can change between the profiles so we're using profile B um, I actually name my ballistic profiles in my phone app starting with the letter of the reticle profile I'm using. So for example, if I'm using profile B to zero, I'll start it with B, if that makes sense. Long left press to save. Press the settings button once to exit that. And press the setting cog once more to get out of this. You'll then notice in the top right corner of the screen, you will see a letter. Uh, this letter corresponds to your ballistic profile, not your reticle profile. So if it says B up there, you are using ballistic data B, which is correct. This has nothing to do with your reticle profile. Hi guys, so I'm down on a small farm today and I've set the zero range at 12 yards because uh, I'm in quite a small enclosed area. And that was the uh, distance I could put the target out at. So I've updated the ballistic settings. So I've changed the uh, scope height, sorry, not the scope height, changed the zero range from 7 yards to 12 yards. And I've um, re uploaded the ballistic data to the scope. What I'm now going to do is talk you through how to adjust your point of impact at any distance less than your zero range. If you're hitting below or you're hitting higher than your the ballistic calculator is telling you where to aim at, then this is how to fix that issue. So what I've done is 
I've purposely set the scope height here to two inches in the ballistic data. I know that's incorrect because it's actually three inches. So this is just to demonstrate the issue. So this should impact low. So I'm at five yards, range the distance. And as expected, it's impacted low, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do on my phone now, slightly off camera, um, so just forgive if the gun moves around. I'm just going to change the ballistic scope, sorry, the scope height and the ballistic settings. So it's best to increase this. So if you're hitting low, you actually need to increase the scope height to to move the shot up and if you are hitting high you need to decrease the scope height to move the shot down so it's best to do this in small increments um, but just to move the video on quicker um, I know the correct height for this should be three inches okay the ballistic data is now updated to three inches so fingers crossed now if I you will need to rearrange when you make any changes and fingers crossed this hits closer or if not on target and there you go I've increased the power now on the air rifle to 11.5 foot pounds because I'm just about to start shooting some rats down the farm as it's getting dark um, so I've switched profiles reticle profile and ballistic profile and I'm just going to quickly check that the calculator, ballistic calculator, has still done its job correctly. And because we're past the zero range, the zero on this profile is 26 yards. So all I'm looking to do here is check that the point of impact is roughly correct vertically, so up and down wise. I am shooting off sticks and I'm... Um, stood on some really uneven ground where the horses have been trod in so it will be a bit shaky I'm quite happy with that like I say I think if I was shooting prone or off a, a bipod on the bench that would be spot on Oh, there we go, bullseye. So, yeah, that is checking the BC value. Now, as that first shot was straight, was hitting high, um, if that was actually happening and you were stable, and that's the actual point of impact, what you would need to do is increase the BC value to basically drop that down. And if it was hitting low, you would need to decrease the BC value to bring that shot up, sorry, so increase to bring the shot down and decrease the value, smaller number, to bring the shot up 